Hello, this video will be going over the 78 series NVR startup wizard. So to begin, click next step and this is where uh, it's just going to ask for the default password which is 888888, so that's the number 8 6 times. And then if you want to change the password, uh, you can do that here. So just put in the 6 8s and then check the box. And then you'll be able to put in whatever password you want. Uh, for now, I'm just going to put in one, two, three, four, five, six. And when done, go ahead and click the next step. First, make sure you have the right time zone set. Uh, since we are in Southern California, we're going to set it to minus eight, which is Pacific time. NTP, so if you have it on the network, you could have it sync with any of these servers. Uh, the default settings are generally fine. You don't need to mess with any of that. Uh, time format and the hour format uh, will show up for the NVR itself, uh, not the individual cameras. DST settings are for daylight savings time. Uh, so if you have it set for the day of the week, uh, right now, it should be set to the second Sunday of March, and this is saying uh, 1 in the morning. And the end time is saying uh, the first Sunday of November at 1 in the morning. Uh, you could also set it for the specific date if you so desire. Auto logout is the uh, time in minutes that it will take for the NVR to lock. Uh, the NVR so that you have to put in your password again. If you do not want to see the startup wizard anymore after the system reboots, then uh, uncheck the box and it will no longer pop up. The device number is for those who may have multiple units and want to be able to, to distinguish between the systems. And the host name is how you will uh, name the unit. With smart display enabled, if you set up any line crossing um, or uh, drawings for certain areas, it will display those areas on the live view. Smart tracking display is so if you are using any sort of the smart detection features, it will uh, create a box around the moving object or individual or whatever you happen to be tracking at the time. And the preview strategy is for improving the live view performance. Uh, this does not affect recordings at all. And once everything here is set to your specifications, go ahead and click next step. The next section covers the settings for the record schedule. The blue color indicates normal recording, which is just constantly recording for any of the time set. The green schedule will trigger only when motion events are detected, but you will have to have motion uh, set up on the cameras themselves for this to work. And the red is for scheduling, uh, recording for any other alarms that may be set up in the unit. You can erase each individual line by line by clicking the eraser icon after picking the normal motion or alarm on the right hand side. Next, if you click the edit button, it will take you to a section where you can be more detailed with your schedule settings. Here you can set the schedule for specific days of the week and differentiate between normal motion detection and alarm. And once you have your schedule set, you can click all on the bottom to apply the same schedule to every day or specify specific days in, in case you want to have a Monday through Friday schedule or a weekend schedule or whatever you need. And at the top, you can see there is a channel section where you can select the channel that you are trying to edit. You can set the pre-record time in seconds and this is for motion detection. And what that does is pre-record some footage before the actual motion event took place. If you check substream, then it will record the substream as well as the mainstream for that specific channel. And if you select redundance, 
uh, it will record on both hard drives, assuming you set up the hard drives correctly for redundancy. And the last button is one key motion detection on the left. What that will do is erase the alarm and normal recording times and set 24 seven motion detection with one click. Once you are done setting up your schedule, go ahead and click next step. The next section is HDD management where you can set up your hard drives. Here you will see what hard drives are connected to your NVR and what their status is. If it's been formatted and can record, it's going to be set to normal. As you can see, the second one says no disk. So that means there are no hard drives connected to that section. If you click the pencil icon next to the specific hard drive, it will take you to the HDD settings. This first section that says HDD will let you choose between any installed hard drives while the attribute line will let you set the hard drive to read write, read only, and redundant. Read write is the normal setting for it to record and for you to be able to view playback. Read only will basically save the hard drive in its current state so no more recordings can be written to it and nothing will be deleted. And if it is set to redundant, then that hard drive can be used as a secondary backup for recordings. What this means is that it will record to one hard drive for normal recording and again to the second hard drive in case the first hard drive fails. And the last line in this section is for hard drive groups. What this is for is to set up different groups of hard drives where you can assign different cameras to them. So if you want only certain cameras to go to hard drive one and certain cameras to go to hard drive two, you can assign them a different group. If you need to format your hard drive, you need to select the hard drive up at the top and then come down here on the bottom left and select format. Please note that if you do choose to do this, it will erase any data on the hard drive. So make sure if this is an existing hard drive that you back up any data first. Please note that the NVR operating system is not stored on the hard drive, so you do not have to worry about deleting any of the NVR's functionality by formatting the hard drive. Down on the bottom, it will show you some statistics for all your hard drives. Total shows the combined total of all your hard drives. Free is any combined free space from all your hard, hard drives. Total recorded days shows how many days you have recorded and remaining recorded days is an estimate of how many more days you can get from the remaining space. Once all your hard drive settings are complete, click next step. The next section on the startup wizard is the network settings. It is important that these settings are set up correctly because this can affect any of the cameras on your network, your ability to view the system from the web interface or software, as well as the phone app. By default, your system should be set to DHCP. What this is, is a protocol for the NVR to communicate with the route, any routers that it is connected to and be assigned an IP address and any of the relevant information. If you see the IP address set to 192.168.1.9, then you either have that sort of configuration and the router okay that IP address, or you are having a cable or port issue because that is the default IP address of the NVR. Otherwise, it is possible that DHCP did not um, work correctly from the router, in which case you will have to manually assign an IP address. If you uncheck DHCP, it will let you set up an IP address manually. Only do this if you are familiar with networking and are able to figure out what your router settings should be. The IP address itself is the unique identifier for your uh, system on your network. The subnet mask and gateway are assigned by the router and set by the router, which uh, basically sets the rules for the IP addresses and identifies the router's IP address as the gateway. 
The MAC address is an identifying number for the network card within the unit and isn't really all that important to know. The primary and secondary DNS are how your unit communicates with through the internet to your phone app or various software and uses the cloud feature. If these are set incorrectly, you may experience some issues. So if you do find any problems with that, we typically assign the primary to 8.8.8.8 and the secondary to 8.8.4.4. This tends to resolve a few issues if you have any. Some units have a built-in PoE uh, for the cameras to connect to, and that is what the internal IP address and PoE working mode are for. The internal IP address is isolated from the network, so it needs to be unique and cannot match your LAN subnet. That is the subnet that any cameras plugged into the internal PoE will get assigned to. The PoE working mode is for setting the NVR to VLAN, switch, or hub. If you have any 89, 88, 81, or 82 series cameras, leaving it in VLAN should be safe. Any other models, you might need to switch it over to switch mode to be able to configure them. You will also need to put it in switch mode if you ever need to access the cameras directly by plugging in an ethernet cable into the PoE switch and using a tool from a computer. As for link speed, it is best to leave it on auto negotiation unless you have any special router settings that you need to make adjustments for. You can also set the max number of users that can access the unit at a time, and this includes anyone accessing it from the web interface, any software, or the phone app. And high speed download and transfer mode uh, should be checked if you plan on doing a lot of downloading uh, footage over the network instead of doing it from the unit directly because that will help speed it up. Otherwise, you can leave them unchecked. Once this is all set correctly, go ahead and select next step. The last section here is for the cloud, which is the section where you can connect the NVR to your phone app. If you see the status as connected, that means your network settings have been set up correctly and you shouldn't have any issues adding it to the app. The app you'll need to download is called GWI, which is spelled G-W-E-Y-E. The two QR codes on the bottom for iPhone and Android are simply to take you to the app stores to download the app. Once you have the app and have created an account, you will want to scan the cloud ID. Do not scan iPhone or Android because that will not work. You can also use the cloud ID manually on the phone app to add the device. The web address listed will allow you to view your unit once you create an account on GWI from Internet Explorer only. Once you are done with this, go ahead and click finish and you are done with the startup wizard.